Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crest Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here today to finish my paper bag junk journal. I will link to the previous couple of videos where we made it and then we put some extra pockets in and did some decorating. Today I'm going to be sewing in the signature and yeah, lightly decorating some of the pages. So this is where we're up to so far. That's not sewn in. I know a lot of lot of you have been making one of your own, so that's fabulous. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. So yeah, that's where well, I pop those labels in after. I was looking for something the right size to fit in the pockets, and those labels were it. So yeah, that's how far we've got. Now before I do the sewing in of the signature, I just want to mention a couple of things. I had a fabulous tip off a lady called Patricia. Patricia, I should be able to say that. I just can't seem to say anything today. And yeah, it's about the closure that I did. And what's mad about this is this is something, I say this a lot, I used to know things and I've forgot them. I just, I've got a foggy brain. And it is, if you want to make this uh, closure more secure, which I opted not to because there were so many layers of card, I thought it would be fine. You could put another button at the back so as you sew your button through the holes yeah pop a button there so you're sewing that button really tight up to the back and that will make sure that your paper does not rip at all i may do that i can't find a completely clear button at the minute though i could make one because i am fortunate enough to have this little set by fiskers i bought this a while back and it will make you a button <laughs> how mad is that yeah, it'll punch you the holes and then you can punch a circle around it. In fact, I'll do one just to show you if anyone fancies it. If you don't want to go buying loads of buttons, it is a good way to make decorative buttons for your junk journals. Now, I like to punch the holes first. There you go. I mean, you can use a circle punch any size then. And then just punch around it. And there you have. <laughs> There, yeah, there you have a button. So, yeah, there you go. I'll just stick a circle card on, like I'd said, and stab through that. Whatever you want. Anyway, that's that. So, thank you so much, Patricia. It reminded me of things my mum used to make when I was growing up. And she used to make these fabric um, toiletry pouches. And she always put a button at the back to secure the usable button to make sure it didn't rip through delicate fabrics. It was like a silky fabric. Well, I would have never remembered that without you, so thank you, Patricia. Another thing, I just want to say hello to Gones. Gones lives in South Africa, in Durban, and there's been some terrible floods in South Africa, in Durban. A lot of people have lost their lives. And I know Gones is without uh, power at the moment and water, uh, but she says she can keep herself occupied crafting and at least she's safe. So please stay safe, Gones, and I hope your family do. And basically everyone in Durban. I did look it, look it up on news. It's not a good situation, is it? So please stay safe. I did read your comment and then I couldn't find it to answer because that's the kind of person I am. I will be ploughing through my comments. I just wanted to get these videos done to get this whole journal finished. So anyway, I shall now crack on. So we're going to sew in the signature. I made my signature from the vintage papers that you can buy on Amazon, other places. Use coffee dyed if you want. I've been a bit too lazy to coffee dye some. I've used, did I use six pieces in end? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I've got six pages. So that's going to give you 24 sides to write on. I'm not going to go to town decorating pages. That just seems to be style I like at the minute. Also, I can see someone using this as a gardening journal and they may want more room to write on the pages. So I'm just going to do a bit of light stenciling and a bit of stamping. So I'm going to do that before I sew it in because I'll just find it easier. Sometimes I do it after because I don't decide I want to stamp and stencil till after I've sewn it in. But today I've decided I want to stamp and stencil first. So I've grabbed some of the stamps from the Your Creative Studio boxes. That's from the garden box. I think that was from the garden box. I've got some of the stamps from the wildflower box. 
this one is particularly gorgeous I love it but any stamp will do you don't have to use the same materials I'm using and I did also get a couple out from an older box, the butterfly one. Because you've got to have butterflies in a garden. I think he's a bit big and chompy, but he has got some little brothers and sisters. Here we go. Tip you out, people. Well, people. The butterflies. I've lost one. No, that only had two in. Phew, I thought I'd lost one then. That's just so cute. So let's stamp away. I've decided to do my stamping in Versafine Vintage Sepia. If you've watched me for a while you know I love the Versafine ink. Uh, if you've got a stamping platform use it. I've got one. don't think I've got room on my desk for it at the minute so I'm just going to go ahead and stamp without it. Now because this is a brand new stamp I've not used before I'm just going to test it on another piece of paper. In fact I'm going to get a sheet of this vintage paper because sometimes stamps stamp differently on different papers. They just do. Some of mine, it got a bit battered, some of mine. It's what I received in Happy Mail. It had gone across the, some of it had gone across the uh, Atlantic three times. <laughs> that were a parcel I had from Shell that got lost on its original voyage. But it finally turned up well travelled. So let's see how well this one stamps. They usually stamp really good, these Your Creative Studio ones. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. Yeah, there's a bit more there I've not pressed down. In. Oh, no, it isn't. You only get half of that wheel. It's Oh, it's like a reflection in water, silly woman. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, let's just go ahead and stamp away with that one. I really like it. I think I'm going to have that on my front page because it's so pretty. Go. I find when you've got the thicker rubber stamps, you, you need, it's not as important to put some foam under your paper when you're stamping. If you've got the really thin silicone ones, sometimes I find it helps. Others might disagree. Feel free. Wouldn't the world be boring if we all agreed on everything? Oh, I like that. That's so pretty. Let's see what that's going to look like in the journal when you open it. There's page one. Oh, lovely. We like. So that's that one. I'm not going to stamp every page. So I don't think I'm going to stamp the next page. And I think we might do some stencil on both those pages. Excuse my croaky voice, people. It's because I've done a video a day. I've done far too much talking. Kids are off school, so I've done far too much talking. Yeah, that's about it. Right, I'm just rifling through my stencils. I've got a pretty floral one I tend to go to a lot. And that's the one I'm looking for. So, rattle, rattle. Hmm. No, that's too big. That's not the one I'm thinking of. Ah, here it is. It's a big one. <laughs> Can you see I use it a lot? It's already covered in uh, masking tape from the last time I used it. Yes, yeah, so if you just want to use part of a stencil and you don't want to get any other bits in, what I do is I just tape around the bits I don't want with masking tape. So, shut there a minute because I think I'm going to do my stenciling with some vintage photo. What's that? That's ground express, so we don't want you. We want you. That would be far too dark. And again, I think I'm going to use my test piece just to see what it's going to look like. I don't have a lot of this paper, so I don't want to... I mean, I can cut that out and use it for a... Oh yeah, that goes really nice with the colour of the paper. So I'm going to do the stenciling in Vintage Photo. Right. So I think here, I want... 
Do I want just that? Let's move the other piece of paper. Oh no, that's the one you want. That's page one. Put that out of the way. Um, yeah, I want that one. But I don't want this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nick me masking tape from up here. And I'm going to cover that. See what I mean? About covering the bits you don't want. Do I want the butter? Yeah, I'm going to have the butterflies. I'll have the flutterbys. We like flutterbys. I just don't want to get these bits here. There we go. It's not sticky enough to damage your paper. But it can also have the added benefit of holding your stencil in place. There we go. So I just want that bit there. And the flutterbys. Looking like they're just about to come and land on it. And before I take it off, I'll peel back. Oh yeah, I think I need a bit more ink down this edge. I'm not majorly careful when I'm stenciling. I'm very heavy handed. But I do love these brushes for doing it with. Yeah, I'm a happy bunny with that one. So that's going to be that. Oh, this is the next page, isn't it? Yeah, that's that page. So on that side of it, I want to put... Hmm, I don't know if I want anything off this stencil. No, I don't like that. I could, um, I could do a stamp. Well, let's get my uh, stencil folder back out. I'm sure I've got some more tall flowers. I've got one in my head, but it's do I actually own it or am I just imagining it? I don't know where it's gone. Oh yeah, here we go. That's the one I had in my head. That one. I don't know why I thought that was a small 6x6 stencil. When it's not, it's a big chompy one. So there, I think I just want a small one, maybe that one, no that one, I want that one, so I'm going to turn that over so any ink that goes off the stencil goes there. And I want it. That flower's supposed to, or foliage, whatever it is, is supposed to go off to one side, but I want it more straight. Yeah, so that's off the edge. That's not a problem. Yeah, and I think I can keep far enough away from that one to keep myself happy. So. I think I used this one when I did my... Orchids and Cats journal. I'm not sure. I could have. I like those little dots that run off. Let's have a look. I'm just going to move it down and put some more dots. Because I didn't get that quite as near the bottom of the page as I intended. Yeah, I'm happy with it now. So let's put that back together. Yeah, that's pretty. So that's what you see when you open that page. That's that. Then we've got that. Yeah, I did end up stenciling up wrong one, didn't I? But it don't matter. 
There is no wrong one. If anyone didn't know I intended to stencil a page further on, they'd never know I did it wrong. So we'll keep that one plain. And then I want a bit of stamping on this one. And I think I want to use this. And I think I'll have it at the top. Yeah, so let's take that page out. Take That is the official website of his http colon slash slash takeitback.com slash. Really? Well, I would have never known that. Right, I'm just peeling off. These come with a piece of acetate on. Yeah. So then the stamp underneath is... Have I done it right, that? Have I took too much? I've took the sticky layer off as well as the acetate. Oh, you silly woman, how did you do that? Yeah, why have you done that? I've been too heavy-handed again. Right, put that back on. Yeah, it comes with a sticky layer to allow you to stick it to a stamp block. I've done this before. Me and my fat, chumpy fingers. There you go. <laughs> Grab your stamp block. There you go. Ta da Is it going to fit on this one? Yeah, I'll just make it fit. And I'm going to do this again with my vintage sepia. Yeah, so be very careful when you take that acetate layer off the back of your stamps that you don't do what I just did. But if you do, just do what I then did. Put it back on. That's your sticky layer. That's why it was so hard for me to get the acetate off because I wasn't taking the acetate off. I was peeling off the sticky back in. Crazy lady. Some of these are so gorgeous, I think I may put, end up putting them on wooden blocks. I want the writing to be straight-ish. Straight-ish. Do you know what? I'm going to stand up, peer over my camera to do this. Because I really want this straight. There we go. Press. Ah, sit back down now. I didn't test this one first, did I? It'd be right. Other ones stamp perfectly. They do. They tend to stamp really well. These. I always hold it down for a while to let the ink just transfer. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. I really like that. Oh, that's, that'd be so nice on a tag. So let's put you back. So that's how we're progressing so far. Da -da. Bit of stenciling, bit of light relief, another stamp. I'm going to leave the centre for whoever gets the journal to do. We're going to miss another page. And I think I want some butterflies on here around bottom. Yeah, right, be careful when you peel this off now, Julie. Don't be taking too much off. I have to say, it's a bit like getting backing off them stickers, them vellum stickers can be a bit annoying. I can't do it. I'm going to pause and do it. There is no backing because I've used this stamp before. I will now go and bang my head against a brick wall. Ta-da! Silly woman. <laughs> oh, I do get to... Uh... Yeah. My brain were buffering, as kids would say. Oh, it's not it's not the stamp that's not sticky, it's my manky old stamp block. Put it on that nice one, girl. Put it on that nice clean one. I'm not going to press this down with my fingers, because that's just a disaster waiting to happen. Press it down with paper. Oh, wow, that's stamped nicely. There we go. This is stamp... Do you know how you did that series of books? It'd be whatever for dummies, like, I think first one was MS-DOS for dummies or something. Well, this is not crafting for dummies. This is crafting by dummies. I think I need to clean this. It's not mega sticky. I hope I don't ruin this page. There we go. Ha ha. We've got you on, mate. You're there. You're done. Let's give you a slight wiggle. Oh, lovely. Then I'm going to get the little butterfly and do a few little butterflies around him. Here you go, you're hiding. I don't know if I've took the backing off this. The 
this doesn't seem sticky i don't think i took the backing off i think actually when i use this one yeah there we go i just went did a do because they're so thick and stiff you can get away with not putting them on stamp blocks there we go i got just the back in that time and i'm going to get a teeny tiny stamp block for this can you hear rattling at bottom of the drawer show yourselves you're not teeny tiny are you oh come here <laughs> Ta -da! I got one there you go that's much stickier because it's not been hanging about in my craft drawer getting manky i really need to look after my supplies a little bit better right so yeah we're gonna go there if we like i don't think i got all your bum on properly but we can live with that and you're gonna let's rock you a little bit make sure we get your bum stamped there we go so let's put that back in i'm liking it and i think we need a bit more stenciling next and we're going to do that after the center page go on open up yeah and I think I want, I might just want that one. Hmm. Yeah, I could do that again. I think I'm going to do that again, but just on one page. Because I do like it. It goes so well with this kit. Yeah, we're going to do that one. But I've turned my stencil upside down this time, you see, because I want it to curve inwards. And I'll just move the other bits of paper so we don't get those messed up. I wish I had a bigger desk. But that would have quite a big room to put the bigger desk in. And I'd probably just get, I'd just have more mess on the desk on top. I, I wouldn't have more room. Oops, I'm inking it wrong ink. I want to use vintage photo. There we go. Yeah, I wouldn't have more room. Not at all. I know I've not put masking tape on, but it's on the other side. So if it looks like I've got ink going through onto paper, I haven't really. I've got ink going through onto back of masking tape. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I had a few people when I did my last journal and only stenciled and stamped a couple of pages who said they wished they'd seen me stencil and stamp them all. So this time I'm doing them all. There's no... I don't really have a formula. It's very random. It's just what I fancy. So trust what you fancy. You might fancy something different. So that's that one. Now I want some of the wildflower stamps. Again, I'm going to miss a page. Because it doesn't do to put something on every page. And we're going to put them on that one. So I'll move those two back ones. And let's grab these. These ones came in the wildflower pack, which was the March one. The original March one. Some people did get it early. But count yourselves lucky. Because <laughs> it's gorgeous. Oh, we like. Do you know what? I, I can't be bothered peeling back enough. <laughs> I might just go for it. Or dare, no, just peel back enough, woman, even if it does take you a while. Oh, I've done it straight away. I must actually be getting better at this. Yay. But they won't want backing falling off, would they? Don't wait here. Still not as sticky as I would like. I really need to clean my stamp blocks, though. No, that's just not doing it for me. I'm a bit... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to have to email them about these stamps, see what I'm doing wrong, because I honestly really don't know. Unless it's got two bits of acetate on. Let's dampen it. Let's try wetting it, see what occurs. 
or clean my stamp block that might help but I know it's definitely not my stamp that's dirty it's a brand new stamp I have got quite a bit of rubbish on my stamp blocks let's dry it yeah I did dry it on my top <laughs> that's really not that's not doing it I'm a little bit baffled as to why that's not sticky mm. not very impressed with that to be honest I mean, the butterfly ended up sticking lovely. Don't know what happened there. Has this got two bits of acetate on? That's the only thing I can think of because that is not sticky at all. No, it hasn't. It's just not got a sticky back. I don't know whether these stamps are faulty. I'm going to stop waffling. I'm just going to stamp them. I really want to use them, so I'm going to use them without stamp blocks. Maybe that's what they're designed for. But then why are some sticky and others aren't? Yeah, that one stuck lovely. I'm really not getting this. So let's see how they work without using a stamp block. Maybe I'm supposed to use some stick and spray. I don't know. It actually worked perfectly. They are such lovely stamps. Maybe I need to mount them permanently on wooden blocks. I don't really know. I mean, that is wanting to take all of it off altogether. Oh, now I've got the acetate. That's not sticky either. Oh, it is. That one's sticky. Maybe I just got one faulty stamp there. Well, give me an opportunity to have a good moan in it. <laughs> We love a good moan. Oh, let's pop that there. Then I'm going to put one of the smaller ones at that side. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to keep persevering with that off camera to see whether it's got two lots of uh, the backing on. Because that's all I can think of. Oh, I've, I've done it again. Look. With the acetate, I've took... The sticky sheet off. Mm. I'll, I'm going to email them about this. Because I didn't think I'd been heavy handed there. I really didn't. And I've peeled the part off that's supposed to be sticky. I bet there were people shouting at me telling me that. But I mean, I could cut this out, but you need to know it, don't you? I'll make the mistake so you don't have to. Now I've got a wrinkle in it. And I've knocked some off desk. No idea where it were. I think it were um, my phone charger. Right, let's see if this works a bit better. Oh, yeah, they work so much better with sticky backing on. But when there's a wrinkle in it, it does put a wrinkle in works. So, yeah, that's two of them. I've peeled the sticky back off. I shouldn't be able to peel that off so easily. So I'm a little bit... Let's try this one. Oh, that come off dead easy. And, yeah. I've still got the sticky backing on. Yeah. I'm just going to show up moaning now. Just show up, woman. Show up. Whee. That's it. I like it. We got there in end, didn't we? We did. So. Let's get the rest of the journal back. And I'm going to miss that page and go straight for the back page. I think I want to do stamping again, not stenciling, because there's so many gorgeous stamps in these kits. Uh, I want to use... I don't know, I've just used that one last page, haven't I? So, what shall I use? I want to use this again. But didn't I have another wooden one? I'm sure there's another wooden one. Let me grab that. Yeah, there's another wooden one. I knew there were one I'd not used. Yeah, it's that lovely jug with all the flowers around. I'm going to go for that one. On this back page. We don't have to worry about sticky stuff then. Do it I supposed to, woman. You're supposed to put the ink to the stamp. <laughs> I know that, but I can't, I can't always be bothered to do it. As junk journals, we're not always that bothered if stamp comes out perfect, are we? If it's not quite perfect, we can live with it. 
so yeah we can tend to be a little bit yeah it'll be right i know i can all right press it wiggle it and hold it love it oh i do like that Right, so now I've got a desk full of inky stamps, so I'm just going to pause, clean my stamps off with a baby wipe. I know people have asked me. I'm I'm loving these at the minute. The Huggies Pure Biodegradable. I literally whack them in my compost bin. I'm not sure if you can flush them. I've not tried that yet, I'll have to see. But I don't have a compost bin full of baby wipes, so they must be, yeah, composting down. Anyway, I'll pause, be back. And I'm back, all the inky stamps are cleaned, my fingers have had a wipe and I've got to show you this before I go any further. You know how I kept saying I'm sure I've got another stencil with, um, yeah, foliage on that I like using. There it is. <laughs> what a womble. Yeah, so I've put two in one packet but then I only looked at that side. Oh, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's definitely a dancing day. Some days it's up there for thinking, some days it's down there for dancing. Right, let's sew this signature and this should be fun. Really should be fun. And I've opted to sew it in with this twine. Yeah. So, <laughs> because this is my last bit of um, one millimetre twine. What I normally do when the hank gets so small is I wind it onto a card, but I've just been constantly using this and I've not wound it onto a card. So hopefully I can get a length. Oh, I can. Right, I'm going to choose... They say that two and a half times the length of your spy, length of your signature, is what you need to sew it in comfortably. I end up not having enough when I do that. So I'm going to go one, two three if i then want long dangly trails so that i can put beads and things on i go for more but i'm just going to tie this one in the middle at signature so three lengths should do me if you're really good at it you cannot cut it off so that you waste as little as possible but i got myself in a total tangle when i try it like that so that's just not going to happen for me but i'm going to show you a different way of stabbing your signatures I'm going to go for the get yourself a big chompy book method. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I think I've done this once before, but I can't remember. So I'm going to open my big chompy book like so. And I'm going to put my journal in it. This might be a bit dodgy if I put journal in. I might be better just doing signatures and then measuring for journal. Do you know what? I'm just going to stab my signatures. It's going to go horribly wrong if I try and do journal and pages. I mean, I do have a punching cradle, but I don't use it often on camera because I know not everyone's got one and they're not always cheap. And as you get better, you don't tend to need it as much. So I'll grab my poking tool my poking device that reminded me of friends that <laughs> yeah it's me all and i'm gonna i don't measure measuring's something that i'm really falling out with so because i'm at an angle doing it i am gonna clip my pages i find it works when i'm at an angle so i'm just gonna clip that there that too heavy that's too heavy get your little one missus there you go and i'm going to stab roughly in the middle Doo -doo. i'm just doing a three old pamphlet stitch on this i'm going to stab up there about an inch and a half from top and i'm going to stab at bottom about an inch and a half from bottom there we go and then what i'm going to do i'm not messing about making no templates because that confuses the life out of me confuses the bejesus out of me sometimes i've got my signature i can see where my holes are i can see where my spine is i'm going to line it up how i want it then i'm going to take a pencil i'm going to stand up for this so i'm looking directly down on this and i'm going to put a pencil mark exactly where i want my hole right next to that same again there right next to it and same again there there you go 
Then I'm going to stab the moles. I'm just stabbing in front of book. You know when I've mentioned I like to stab books? You can now see why I like to stab books. <laughs> it's, it's not just a fun pastime I have. So that's one. That's two. And if I'm in shot, that's three. There you go. So I'll now grab a needle. I've got my thingy. Oh, it's got tangled in something dangling off my camera. Um, I've lost all my proper book binding needles, so I just pick something that looks like me twine will fit through it. There, my big book binding needles I've got left. They're far too big. They leave holes in the paper that are far too big for my liking. So, oh, I like that. I've got my bodkin with a big hole. So I'll grab my piece of twine. If you are going to try this method I'm showing you, make sure when you put your signature back, you've got your top and your bottom in the right place. If you've turned it, your holes aren't going to line up. It's easier this time because I've got this pretty pattern on the front to remind me what side it needs to be on. I'm going to thread my bodkin through. But I use all sorts of different methods. So I suppose by showing different ones, you might find one you like. I'm one of these people who, if doing it proper way, it looks a little bit faffy. I'm like, nah, I've got to find another way. So I'm going to go through from the centre of my signature because I'm going to tie a bow on inside. Yeah, I'm going to go through that hole to the outside. side. Sometimes I can't get this through with my fingers, but I can. If I can't, I've got some pliers with an acrylic tip on end, and I use those. I'm just looking if they're handy to show you. No, they're not. So I hope I don't need them if I don't know where I've put them. Right, so that's that. And I'm going to pull it. Oh, did I hit camera? Of course I did, because it's, today it's crafting, crafted by dummies. Then I'm going to go back in. You can go in top or bottom. It really don't matter at this point. So I'll get through my cover first. Turn it over without whacking camera if I can. Do, 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 do. And then I'll go through my signature block. This is what it's called a signature. It's just a collection of pages. If anyone is really new and the wondering. So pulley pulley. Then let's see if we can get back through this one without pulling it apart. Through the pages, through the hole on the spine. And yay, we did it. And yeah, yeah, I've just, I just need to make sure now I've got roughly an even amount of string on each end. So I'm just pulling that through a bit more. Yeah, now I'm going to go back in the middle. This can be tricky to not sew through your original piece of string in that O. What I try and do is I pull it down. And let me show you. This is awkward. And also on inside, I'll pull it down and hold it. So then it gives me a little bit of room at top. Yeah, and I try and go through. I quite often fail. Have I done it? Nah, the heck. I've got through cover, but I haven't got through that. I probably can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get it through there. Go on, woman, you can do it. You can do it. Put a bit more of your needle through. But don't worry if you do so through twine. I think I'm probably going to, so I can show you what to do if that happens. There we go. We did it. Right, if you've sewn through twine, when you come to tighten it like that, it might not tighten. And it doesn't seem to be doing, because it looks like I've sewn one piece of twine through other. Have I? No, I haven't. I'm just being a numpty. Pull that tight. There you go. No, I didn't sew through. So pull it tight, but not so much that you start ripping your paper. 
have a quick look that you've got no baggy bits. Oh, I thought I had a baggy bit then, but it's end of that. No baggy bits in sight. And all I'm going to do is tie a knot, then a bow. A knot, then a bow. Then if the person who has this journal wants to put beads on end and have this dangling out bottom, it looks like we've got enough. Yay, I'm quite happy with that. I like the rustic look of that bow in the middle. I'll move my stabby book. And I'll take that clip off now. And we'll just... This will just make the book work a little better if you do this between all your pages. Oh, there we go. It is quite a chunky twine for sewing in that, so... It probably wouldn't work if you had a big, thick, chunky journal with lots of pages. But for this one, I think it's perfect. So we've now got our pages in. Let's have a look, see what the journal looks like when it's closed up. Oh, look at it. I just love the feel of this one. I think I may put music paper on the back, you know, I can't decide. So I've got a few bits of random, uh, yeah, they've gone now. You know, little bits of glue that I've rubbed off. They've got stuck to the back. But that's another reason why sometimes I don't decorate back straight away. Because I can put the paper on after and that'll be covered up. Right. So, there we have it. Right, all we've got left to do now is a couple of tags. So the journal itself is finished. And I just need to, you can leave those tags as you are. It all depends what you want to put in it. So I'm going to call that the journal done. I will be back with a separate video just decorating tags that you can use for anything. Because if I put it now in with this video, other people might not see it. They might think, no, nah, I don't want to make a journal. But they won't see the tag decorating. Does that make sense? I don't know. Do I make sense at all today? Anyhow. I'm happy with that. I'll let you know if I decide to put paper on back. I have had an inquiry on Etsy about a lady wanting to buy this. I haven't answered you yet. But what I will say is if you were to inquire by email, the journal would be cheaper. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching, <laughs> I obviously can't reply to you on Etsy with that. When you, um, you're not allowed to do any off-site sales. Any customers that are brought to you by Etsy, you can't sell to them off-site. That's breaking the rules, and that's something I never do. But this lady obviously saw this journal on YouTube. The fact that she's messaged me through Etsy, I don't think that seems fair that Etsy should then get roughly a 15 to 20% chunk of this value. So if you message me through email, yeah, the journal will be cheaper for you. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.